uh, this is part three to the uh, World Backup Day series of videos. Uh, and today we're going to go over snapshots in more detail and more specifically uh, SnapSync. Um, so here's a small comparison chart of things like Snapshot Replica, which we featured in a previous video. Uh, that's really good for if you've got uh, a QTS based NAS. You can also use it on QUTS Hero. Uh, we've also got SnapSync, uh, which is uh, sort of the topic of today's video. I'll show you setting it up and, and why it's really good. Um, but the best thing about both um, Snapshot Replica and SnapSync is it's a really good way to do block based backups uh, from one NAS to another NAS. If you were to use something else like um, RTRR on uh, hybrid backup sync so real-time remote replication on hybrid backup sync um, it's going to be file based so if you have a large file but just modify one thing in there one small change it's going to back up the whole file again uh, with the snapshots it's only the blocks that change um, the best thing about snap sync is it's uh, real-time data synchronization so you can set it up to, to happen in real time so you could have for example, a snapshot every single minute on your QUTS Hero NAS. Um, and then as soon as that snapshot is taken, it's sent across um, uh, straight away to the, uh, the the remote NAS that you're backing up to. Um, so anybody that wants to read that can read read the information there. Now, what I've got here to demo it with is a, a TVS-H1288X. Um, so this is just bog standard configuration, um, 16 gig of RAM, nothing fancy. Uh, and I've also got the uh, TSH24 uh, 2490 FU uh, to work as a destination for the data. So that's what I'm working with here. Uh, the TSH 2490 is completely blank, completely empty, um, basically a, a factory default setup. Um, I configured a RAID 10 for the, the drives and set it up um, with just one storage pool. So that's all I've done. Absolutely nothing else uh, enabled or done to this one. Um, so if I go across to the uh, TVSH 1288X, I've created one extra shared folder, which I've called ISO. Um, in there, uh, like one of the previous videos, I've just bunched a bunch, of ISO, uh, a bunch of ISO files just to mimic some data that's in there that I can change and delete and do some things to. Um, so there's uh, just four ISOs that I've got. Not a huge amount of capacity, but it doesn't matter for the, uh, for the demo here. Um, so here I've got the, uh, the ISO share. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable snapshots on that ISO share. So if I come up here, I've got the... Uh, the ISO um, uh, share highlighted. I'm going to go snapshot and I'm going to go to the snapshot manager. That little wizard about what it's going to do, how it works, things like that. I'll skip that. And now I'm going to click schedule uh, snapshot. So here I'm going to enable the snapshot and I'm going to set it to repeat um, every one minute. Uh, and I'm going to keep those snapshots for about three months. Um, I've turned off enable smart snapshot. It's a good idea for you to leave that enabled though. A uh, smart snapshot will only take a snapshot um, if um, there has been something modified. Um, I want it to just keep taking snapshots for the purpose of the demo. So I've got that disabled for right now, but um, largely there is no point taking another snapshot if nothing changed since the last one. But if you want to, you can enable it. Uh, the uh, QUTS Hero um, operating system based NAS, um, they can store um, over 65,000 snapshots each. So in this sort of setup that I've got here, uh, for the duration of the demo i've got plenty of snapshots there to do that um, so over here you've got snapshot retention you can do things like smart versioning and set it up so it's a bit more intelligent so let's say 24 hourly snapshots seven dailies for example um, but i've just got it set to keep for three months for the for the purpose of the demo here so i'm going to say that's all good and i'm going to click ok on that one and um, so it says there's a remaining time for the next snapshot is going to be in one minute time and um, just for good measure i'll take a snapshot straight away uh, just so that we can kick off with uh, with the number one there. There we go. So we've got the first snapshot all done. Uh, no trickery there. It, it's that quick to take a snapshot. Um, so we can see we've got one here. And for every minute throughout the course of uh, this uh, this video, you should see that that starts going up. Uh, right now, if I look over on the TSH2490, there's nothing there. But everything you see that we're doing on the uh, H1288X soon will start mirroring here to a volume once we create this. Um, so if I go down to the, uh, the SnapSync section on the left hand side, now we've got a snapshot to work with. I'm going to go to SnapSync. It says there's no SnapSync jobs at the moment. Um, this SnapSync service may be off uh, by default, so you might have to enable that to, uh, to make this work. If you click create a SnapSync job and you haven't done that, um, it will do it for you. Um, incidentally, over here on the, uh, uh, the TSH2490, the destination, um, I did enable uh, the SnapSync service there as well. 
So if we go back to the uh, TVSH1288X where the ISO folder is, I'm going to say create a snap sync job and I'm going to sync to remote NAS. So you can pull the data in or you can send the data out. So in this example here, I'm going to um, send the data out to the remote NAS. So I'm going to say sync to remote. It pre-populates everything here. Um, so it's called it public dash rep, so replication. Um, I'm going to change it because I don't want the public folder uh, done. I'm going to go to the, uh, the ISO folder and it's changed the job name to ISO-REP. You can change it to anything you like if you wish. Um, and if you've got more than one storage pool, you can select those there as well. So I'll just click Next. Um, so it's already found the uh, the other NAS that we're, we're going to send the data to. So the TSH2490 is the only other compatible NAS on the network uh, that can take that data. So now I've just got to uh, authenticate with it. So I'm not using the default uh, name of admin anymore, so I'll change that to a different one, type in my admin password, I'll click connect. So this should take a second just to um, verify the, that I've got the correct credentials for the other NAS, the TSH2490. There we go. So it says the destination NAS has one or more storage pools with sufficient space, which is great. Uh, so down here we've got the uh, schedule options, so um, you can do it on a set schedule, daily, weekly, monthly, if you wish. I'm going to choose the real-time option, though. Um, so if I tick the real-time option, it takes away all that scheduling uh, stuff from the uh, the window, just goes straight to real-time. Uh, a little information pop-up there um, saying that any um, anytime you do any change to the source, it's immediately going to be replicated uh, to, the, uh, to the other NAS. Um, but it's saying you should have good uh, latency for this to work. If you've got a high latency, it's going to cost uh, uh, write delays to the local storage. Um, so here I'm going to say the destination pool is storage pool 1. It's the only storage pool I've got on the uh, TSH2490. It says, uh, what do I want the uh, folder or shared folder to be called when the data gets there? Uh, so I could call this something like um, TVSH1288X uh, SnapSync, something like that. don't know if that's going to be too long, but we'll try it. Down here you've got some options, compression, dedupe, uh, encryption. Um, I'm going to untick all those, I don't need that for the demo. And then I'm going to click Next. Uh, select network adapter, so it's automatically selected uh, the network adapters here. Um, I've only got one uh, cable connected on each NAS, um, so I've, I've got the 2.5 gigs uh, just connected through a, through a plain switch here. Uh, so I'm going to leave that, that's all, all, all good for what I want to do here. So I'm going to click Next. Um, there is a latency threshold, so you can set that uh, to be whatever you want, so that um, if there's slow latency or whatever, it will pause the uh, it will pause the snap sync. I'm happy with all that. Just a quick summary of all the options that we've uh, we've chosen. So I'm happy with that, and I'm going to click create. Uh, so now what that's going to do is going to create that destination folder over on the TSH2490 that I uh, created, the TVSH1288X snap sync folder. Um, it's also going to create the real-time sync between the uh, between the two NAS here. So it's going to, as soon as this is finished, it's going to be immediately uh, replicating um, uh, the snapshots from NAS one to NAS two. Um, so that's just transferring all the the job parameters and specs between the two. Um, so if I go back and look at the uh, storage slash snapshots, we can see we've got the uh, the one snapshot that was taken um, on the main NAS. Um, it's setting it everything up. There we go. It's already jumped up to five because that took me a couple of minutes to set that up. Um, so while it refreshed there, um, we've now got five snapshots to work with. So if I go back to the snap sync section, still setting the job. It's transferring the data across 251 megabytes a second. So that's about as fast as you can get with a 2.5 gig Ethernet connection. Uh, so that's getting the data. If I go look at the TSH2490FU, we can see that the snap sync job has also now been created. Um, it looks identical on both, um, so the same information is there on both. If I go look at the storage slash snapshots now, before we just had a public folder, um, but now we've got the TVSH1288X snap sync folder that I uh, told the other NAS to create as the destination uh, for the snap sync data. Uh, one thing you will notice is there is a orange uh, exclamation mark triangle there, um, so if you hover over that, it says it's read only. Uh, so that's quite important that this folder, this, this shared folder that's been created for the SnapSync destination to maintain integrity of the backup, it is set as read-only on this NAS. So while you can look at the data on this NAS, you cannot change it. So that's quite important, but I'll show you how you can change that later. 
Uh, so if we come back here, everything says updated. The uh, snap sync is complete. Um, everything is uh, between the, the two NAS. So if I go to the uh, snapshot section on both, um, I'll show you how it looks. So here we've got six snapshots over here. Oh, now we've jumped to seven. It must have just taken another snapshot. So if I look back here um, on the TVSH 2490, if I refresh this, that number six will change to seven. So there we go. It's already at seven. Um, so as soon as you take a snapshot, so if I come back here and I look at the uh, H1288X here, if I right click and go take a snapshot, I'm going to say OK, so that, that goes to 8. So I'll just have to click OK in a second. Uh, so when that goes to 8 after taking the snapshot, click OK, that's there. If I click over to the TSH2490FU, uh, within a couple of seconds we should start seeing that the uh, snapshot uh, information there goes to 8. There we go, it's gone to 8. So it's absolutely instantaneous, so your um, sort of recovery points um, are near zero, so you're able to get back to... Um, your your working data as quick as possible. Um, if NAS1 was to have a, a disaster happen to it, something failed, um, fire, flood, something like that happened, all the data that was being worked on on that NAS uh, is going to be sent in real time across to this NAS. Now, whilst it's read-only, we can go in and look at it. So here on the TSH2490, we can go look in file station as an example. We've got the, the shared folder there. This would work through a uh, a network connection as well, or SMB share, for example. Uh, we can see all that data that's uh, that's been sent over there uh, for that snapshot. Um, but because it's read-only, I can't change any of this data. I can't edit it. I can't add to it. Um, it's completely read-only. But let's imagine that there has been a complete disaster, and NAS1 um, has gone down. It's failed. There's a there's an issue with it. Uh, so what we can do, uh, we'll forget about this uh, H1288X. Um, for now, we'll look at it here. We go to the Snap Sync menu in Storage and Snapshots. So in here, we can see that the uh, Snap Sync is still active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it. It says, you sure you want to stop the job? I'm going to say yes. So whilst I've stopped it, if I was to go back to Storage and Snapshots, we've still got the uh, exclamation mark. So it's still in read only. So I can't change it. I can restart the Snap Sync if I want, but the data integrity has still been held here because it's still read only. But if I come back to SnapSync, I'm going to delete the SnapSync job. I'm going to get rid of it completely. Um, so it's no longer there. If I do go look at the uh, TVSH1288X SnapSync section, it's also gone from there. So this, this is gone uh, completely. But now if I look back at storage and snapshots on the TS uh, H2490, uh, um, the red exclamation mark has gone away. So this uh, SnapSync folder is now just a standard folder. So if you wanted to uh, recover working from this one instead while the other NAS was down for whatever reason, you can now work directly from this folder. So if anybody was going to um, browse the network for it, it has now um, basically been promoted to a normal shared folder. Anybody can use it. Uh, one thing you may have to do as an admin is you may have to come into uh, the permissions of the shared folder. Um, so if you had um, this particular folder that was um, shared on the other NAS, if it had some uh, rights and folder permissions for certain groups or users, uh, you may have to reassign those. Um, they wouldn't be done automatically with the snap sync. They're, they're separate from the snapshot. Um, so you may have to reassign some permissions. But the most important thing here is to get back and working on that data. There's no restore process. There's no copying of data. You don't have to... Uh, restore or clone a snapshot or anything like that. You simply delete the snap sync job and you can start working on it immediately. There's no copying or transferring of data to anywhere. Um, it's ready to go absolutely instantly. Um, so snap sync, um, again, it was, it's only available on um, QUTS Hero um, or also our QES NAS, the, the dual controller NAS. Um, but uh, it's not available on QTS. For QTS, you have to use snapshot replica. Uh, you do also still have Snapshot Replica available here on Q, uh, QUTS Hero as well. Um, but in most cases, I would generally recommend that you use SnapSync. It's just got so many more features. It's so much better and it's got so many more options on it. Um, so that's, uh, that's the, the, the options I'd recommend for, uh, for SnapSync. Um, if anybody has any questions on uh, how SnapSync works, if, if, you, if you have any, any other questions of anything I didn't cover with it there, uh, please let me know and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot.